Well, welcome to another video and it's a very nice, thankfully now, low pressure system is incoming. I'm hoping the rivers have a bit of rainfall. Now, I've got to be brutally honest with you guys, the river that I've been fishing, I've literally done five blanks on, which is not always uncommon on this particular waterway to blank on, but each year, as each stretch of this particular waterway varies uh, with its bio stock of fish and populace of barbel. And none of them are particularly easy stretches as such, but some have more stocks than others. And the stretch that I'm fishing has a lower stock. And each season, it does seemingly get progressively more and more difficult. So yeah, having a run of tough luck at the moment. I've had, during those blanks, I've had one decent bite which I struck and struck thin air and that was after I just set up half an hour in evening time on one of those. Um, most recent trip I had crayfish at the bait, must have whittled it right down to just a small fragment left and I, that was on the black snail boilies and I do roll them as you know very hard to negate the crayfish as best as possible. Now they must have whittled it down and weakened it, next thing I know crayfish have gone quiet, rod tip, bang bang bang, typical barbel knocks you know, really picking up the bait, moving about. Then, after a good few knocks in between little moments of tranquility, I had one massive rap. Fish has taken the bait off the hair. Obviously, as I say, weakened by the craze. Next trip I went down, tried the same swim, because obviously it did produce a decent take, and I got crayed into, into the bejesus of the, of the next year. <laughs> so that was a bit of a no-no. So it's been really tough going. As I say, some of you guys, who fish local to me will know what waterway I'm fishing, I'm pretty sure, by me saying it's been a few barbel blanks and it's getting progressively more tricky each year, especially on the harder stretches. And that is in part, whether we like to stick our heads in the sand or not, that is in part to do with predation. So, here you go. So, I hate to say it is what it is, but at the way it is at the moment, it is what it is. Um, but trying my hardest, as I say, out for this evening going to fish into the small hours. I'm supposed to have heavy rain coming in at some point, maybe 2, 2 or 3 a.m. Um, which I'm hoping, if we do have that heavy rain moving, the next few days should make it ideal on the river. Put some much needed invigoration into the waterway. I do think it's also a case at the moment, due to the lack of rainfall um, and the high pressure we've had, I think it's around about 1,025 and 1,023 HPA which isn't ideal, you much prefer a <laughs> falling pressure system to be honest. Um, I think that coupled with the lack of rainfall is meaning the fish really aren't mooching about, they're not actively seeking anglers baits, they will take them but you need to drop on them and that's what I've done on a couple of my previous blanks, I've dropped onto areas where I've had the bites. Um, so ideally you are looking to drop onto the fish. I'm going to be fishing just the one swim though this evening. Um, if things don't go to plan I am definitely going to be either way, which I have been doing anyway, adopting an approach of fishing more swims per trip and splitting the half hour, 45 minutes between each swim to see if we can instantly drop on a fish. As I say, I don't think the low stock that is about is really in the mood for moving up and down river and actively seeking food because the waterways not got that much rainfall, not got much flow to it. So go through the bait that I'm using. So what I've got here, this is the following, and that is what you've seen. I had that lovely Blackwater 1014 on. That's the Palatrax multi worm. They're a pillow shape or elliptical boily, and that is a mixture of mealworm, silkworm, and earthworm. Really, really does pair up very nicely with the other bait that I use, them, which is one of my favourite baits also. And that's the following that's the Essential Baits Black Snail, which I roll from their base mix. that I order off of their website. So I tend to roll that very hard. Both using them with matching pace. Uh, the black snail has got a mixture of water snail, aquatic water snail to it. And it's a very reliable bait, as I say, you've seen on numerous of my videos. I wouldn't leave home without this. But also, likewise, pairing it up and fishing it in tandem with the Palatrax multi worm has been superb. They're both, in their own way, a natural style of bait. Aquatic water snails are present in our, in our rivers and our lakes. And, of course, a worm-based or multi-worm-based boilie. You can't get more kind of a natural component to pull into a bait. So, you know, they both have produced for me. They both do produce for me. As I say, the multi-worm produced that lovely black water 1014. 
and I have been on re on all the recent trips I've been using them fishing them in tandem sometimes giving one bait two or three hours and another bait an hour and a half to two hours and seeing you know what may but the first blank that I had on the waterway the bite that I struck into nothing which was a really good bite to be fair chub possibly that was on the multi worm the other bite which the fish managed to get the bait which had been whittled down by the craze um, that was on the black snail but as I say it's been tough going and every season believe me I mean I fished this waterway for I, I don't count the I started fishing it when I was seven because when you're young you, you're always mucking about you haven't got the patience or the attention span um, but I would say I'm, I mean I'm 40 years old and I would say I fished it for a good 30 years you know um, and I've seen it seen it evolve I've seen different areas change how much they overgrow they get abstracted and how much the biomass all the fishing goes downhill and how the barbel stocks are thinning out now leading on to that for a moment you know it's, I would like to see some more barbel stocks being introduced into the river um, that would be nice um, at the same time you've got to fix the root calls with the waterways in general um, I don't think just pushing and pushing barbel stocks in or even other species in to the river just to create an artificial almost commercial carp puddle effect is really fixing the root cause that's being detrimental with our rivers I think there's many other factors that need to be fixed first and foremost and also barbel stocks do need to be introduced but it needs to be a healthy environment for them anyway that's the sum of it I'm not going to bore you anymore I just thought I'd give you a catch up on what's going on and what's going on this evening and fingers crossed hopefully this particular trip will be one to rejoice over and there will be a fruitful reward at the end but one thing I will say fishing intimate low stock rivers is always a different ball game to fishing well stocked rivers and I'm not having a knock at anyone that fishes other waterways you know that's obviously up to you um, and and those waterways which are local to you why wouldn't you fish them but as I always say very low stock rivers it's a different ball game altogether to fishing high stock rivers with a real good biomass of barbel but it, it creates a which I'm probably talking to quite a few anglers that fish rivers with low stock be that the Bristol Avon the Loddon and many other waterways such as um, such as the lower Lee not the upper so much because there's some good stocks on the upper but um, you know it creates a mindset in an angler a determination a bit of grit should I should I say and a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a certain mindset that you really do have to you know forget any tough trips take on board every bit of positive that you can take and keep a good resolve about yourself don't don't ever allow it to get you down I mean I don't I enjoy all my trips anyway just happy to be out on the bank but I always go home with a smile I don't get in and go put a grumpy face on I'm not damn happy on peeves off I'm not happy with this not happy with that you know I do I do mull things over and think about how rivers have changed I do chat with a few of my friends on Instagram about that those who know the waterways especially as well and those who share similar waterways which have got lower barbed stocks but you've got to keep an open mindset and just keep don't forget that you've had blanks but put them to one side and keep fresh a clean slate and just keep thinking positively keep plugging keep trying keep trying to adapt things keep trying different approaches and sometimes it will work sometimes it won't but you've got as I say stay as positive as possible anyway I'm really waffling I mean that's around about nine minutes of me waffling hope I haven't bored you guys anyway let's get a little bit of bird seed in um, I didn't go and say what I'm using though I've got just loose bird seed today I'm gonna to put a few broken halves of the baits that I've showed you around Centre pin reel loaded with 10 pound Shimano Technium. The rod is a Shimano uh, Vengeance Barbel Power Rod, one and three quarter test curve. And the reel is a Marco Cortese Model 2. Simple low resistance setup, dread and sink braid hook link, size six Palatrax the hook. And attaching to the low resistance rum ring will be a Palatrax Stones lead replacement weight, which is, as the name suggests, made from stone. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to get on hopefully what will be the chorus and might be official to catch you guys in a bit.
Well, already getting the odd knock, which is a positive sign. Definitely not crayfish either. Not yet, anyway. Seems to be like the, might be a fish or two about. It's a nice evening though. Got a nice bit of a southwesterly breeze. Nice cloud cover. Looks like it will eventually rain, as promised. So, a bit of welcome rejuvenation for the river and for most waterways. I do think, especially these ones around this neck of the woods, they do need a drop of rain or two. So, maybe if tonight's not the night, with the rainfall that's due, maybe another trip will provide a welcome reward. But you can never tell, and you've just, there's no good or bad time to go fishing, you've just got to go when you can go. Well, welcome back to another video. Excuse me if I look like I'm pouring an ounce of, well, eight ounces of fluid. Absolutely sweating making my way down to the river. Um, it's coming up for around eight o'clock. Um, it's been very tough going on this particular waterway. I've had, on one of the other reaches, I've had nine blanks in a row fishing nine o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night till two in the morning. We've just, during that course of time, two bites which I would say were barbel bites but I've been crayfish to hell I've had trips where I've seen lots of otters on that stretch but as any of you guys that fish this particular waterway know a angler does have to have a certain level of controlled impatience and I'm by that I mean being patient and having controlled impatience allowing yourself to not get bogged down and dejected as such but I do think the barbel stocks on some of the reaches are getting lower and lower Anyway, back down tonight. I'm not going to bore you too much, guys, as I do need to also get set up. Marco called Tessie centre pin, loaded with 10 pound Shimano Technium. The rod's a Shimano Vengeance Barbel Power Rod. Simple setup, low resistance, quick change run ring, Palatrax stones, weight, buffer bead, anti tangle tubing, and down from there, Drennan Sink Braid, and a nice size 6 Palatrax the hook, and a kicker. Simple, effective. Bait wise, with me, I've got, you've seen these on numerous videos, black snail boilies and Palatrax multi worm, which I had that nice black water barbel on. So that's the sum of it. I'm going to roll the dice in the swim this evening. I've got bird seed ground bait as well, I'm not going to bore you with that, I'm going to actually loose feed that in. I'm not mixing with it, with it any of the grilled hemp ground bait, just loose bird seed drops it upstream so it can drift down and settle. That's the sum of it. It's been tough going for the barbel on this particular waterway. Each stretch has all, most stretches have got low stocks, but some are getting lower and lower. And as I say, I saw plenty of otter activity on the other stretch, and I'm not making it up. It's been gutting that has. But as I say, never, never one to be a glass, you know, glass that's pretty empty. I'm always a glass half full type guy, so I'm going to keep sticking at it. And I'm going to get the rod out, put a little bit of bird seed in, and crack on. Excuse me if I don't have the light on in my swim and don't show too much into darkness because I really don't want to necessarily ruin my chances even further. Anyway, that's the sum of it. Let's get crack. <laughs> Let's crack on. And got my fingers crossed. Always, always fingers crossed. Well, a lovely evening. Nice, very benign conditions, very still, very mild as well. So it has been, we've had some chilly nights, but it's very mild tonight. Fingers crossed the bar will decide to feed or peruse along the gravel runs here. Let's see. 
time will certainly tell. We're in, guys. We are definitely in. Oh, come on, baby. No, 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 no,
the camera. I was, it's got voice command on it and I was glad no one was fishing nearby. They would have been annoyed with me, I think. Um, I was saying, you know, record, 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 record. Obviously, really heart in mouth because, you know, that, that amount of blanks. Um, <laughs> and it weren't recording. So, quickly, quickly playing the fish, managed to get it to record. And um, at the same time, as, this, as I'm watching this snag and trying to think, what am I going to do? Because the fish is powering and taking me under the trees, further downstream. And the snag's using its, obviously going in the current and using its weight and momentum to... I just thought to myself, if I try to bully too much, you know, you're going to you're gonna sever on it. It's a big piece of wood. So I slacked off just slightly. You know, it's an old kind of technique most anglers use. If a fish gets snagged, you try to slack a little bit, see if the fish will use its goodwill and common sense to swim out and I slacked off and the fish did swim out and snag drifted off downstream my heart and myself breathed a heavy sigh of relief and um, then she realized she was hooked even more and um, it was a bit of a short fraught battle you didn't get to see the whole of it because I had to you know try and concentrate on playing the fish and that snag and trying to get the camera to record I'm just getting used to a few of the settings on this this um what I'm using which is a um, DJ, DJI Osmo camera so it's got a front facing camera on it as well yeah screen even um, but it's got voice commands and the voice commands weren't too willing to work which I weren't impressed with um, I don't need that kind of thing so um, but I did manage to get quite a bit of the scrap on, on film as well but yeah heart in mouth I mean when you've had that many blanks when you do get a fish no matter you know whether it's you know three blanks or ten blanks that that kind of nervousness sets in where you're thinking to yourself, if this slips mentally, it's going to, you know, it's going to lodge there, and you're going to go, oh no. And, it's, and it was just, you know, it was lodging there. You've you've had these blanks, you've had these blanks, Mark. And um, all you need now is this, this snag or this fish to, um, yeah, go west. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. Yeah, really nice to, really nice to have had a so lovely. And even better to always see him swim up strong, you know. I always have a very good routine. Anyone who's fished with me will know. Rest the fish, calm yourself down, get all your landing mat, wasteling, camera, etc., all prepared. And then that way the fish is always having a nice rest. You see, sometimes see anglers, you know, play the fish. They put all their all out and knackered. Water levels could be low, could be low oxygen. Um, they bring them straight out on the bank to get a photo. You know, you don't want to be doing that, obviously. You always want to rest when you land them rest after you've taken your pictures and then slip them back after they've rested well a couple of times but I don't mean just for a few minutes give them a good rest and you saw that fish it was well rested frisky lively really wanted to get going I kept burrowing back down into the landing net fold though didn't it but yeah really happy anyway from a happy soul on the banks of the Lobben um, if you have enjoyed the video uh, do take time to click the thumbs up and perhaps share it on your Instagram, Facebook pages and your social media or your forums etc. That would be most appreciated and helps me to increase the following of the channel which also helps to promote it and me to um, hopefully produce more video for you chaps to watch. Um, I must admit the subscriber count's going up very very nicely and that's very good of you guys who are new to the channel and of course my existing subscribers. You're absolutely brilliant. So thank you so much for your continued support, your comments and your kind gestures, you know, it's really, really, really heartfelt and very welcome and, and as I say, appreciated. Um, got to admit, it's a personal goal. I'm at around about 7,560 subscribers. Would like to get up to a benchmark or goal of 10,000, so fingers crossed. It would be, would be nice, but at the end of the day, I only ever started this channel to produce videos that I could share, that are down to earth, heartfelt, got agendas of of caring for the environment about it as well and um, just my kind of everyday trips and videos just like you guys you know your fishing trips as they are raw and walks and all kind of thing including you know I know it bores some people at times but including you know my personal life as well but there you go um, as I say I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, from a very happy soul on the banks of the Lobben I'll see you on another video take care goodbye